we do have a purpose. We may not be perfect people. We may not have perfect situations, but we are still significant nonetheless. And we have been blessed with a rich body of emotions. We have emotions. We're not like roses or plants or bushes that have life without feeling. We have feelings. And when we use them properly, they are very effective in motivating you toward your destiny. I want you to be clear and understanding that purpose and passion are interconnected. Unfortunately, we live in a crazy world that we're busy all the time and everything fast, 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 fast. And we are losing touch with who we are, our inner sense of passion. But it is your passion that empowers you to be able to do that thing you were created to do. We have passion through which we thrust into the throes of life to accomplish the things that we were created to do so that we can function at a higher dimension with authority and with conviction. You need passion to withstand all the obstacles that go along with your purpose. Just because you're living on purpose doesn't mean you're going to have problems. You're going to need thrust to be able to get up off the ground and to step into the field of your dreams. Even if you have not landed on the thing, at least get in the territory of the thing you are dreaming to do and that you hope to accomplish to do. And through that passion, you're able to ignite things you have never ignited before. I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. You're saying, I don't feel a thing. All of us go through times that we don't feel anything at all. But in order to ignite passion again, you have to be exposed. Get out of the boat, Peter. Walk on the water. Go do something you've never done before. Get involved. Get connected. Because when you are exposed, you see that there are more options than your contemporary situation at any age. That's the good news about it. You don't have to be cute. You don't have to be pretty. You don't have to be a size three. You don't have to be a blonde or brunette. You don't have to be 20 or 50. At any age, you can still ignite your purpose through finding your passion. That's good news. What then, what then do we do with the lulls in life, the dark shadows in life? We all have them, the secret pains and burdens that we have in life. Are, are they in fact distractions from our purpose? Absolutely not. I have never seen anybody who did extraordinary feats that didn't have extraordinary issues. It is the passion that gives you the power you need, but it is the pain from which you have the conviction about it. If you had not been through some pains, you would not have the burning to do what you do. I believe that children are like arrows. They need to be directed. You aim them at the thing you want them to hit, but you don't push an arrow. You pull it away from it. And it is the digression that causes the progression. If your life has been tough and it's been hard and you had to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and your childhood wasn't so good, guess what? That was just the arrow being pulled back so that when you are released, you can trust after the thing you're after. So you don't have to grieve over what you didn't get and what didn't happen and how you were treated and who didn't raise you and who didn't love you. You don't have to grieve about it at all. Once you understand the greater the digression, the stronger the progression. If Nelson Mandela had not been incarcerated, had not been mistreated, had not been ostracized, he would not have the passion to do what he does. If Oprah Winfrey had not gone through the things that she had gone through, she would not be so committed to making sure that everybody finds their purpose and finds their dream and everybody gets healed and everybody's okay. I'm telling you, what you think is working against you is actually working for you. My challenge in our generation is that gradually through entertainment, through television, through media, through every way possible, we are living in a generation of the dumbing down of ideas. Because we have traded effectiveness for busyness. Statistics say we are busier than any other generation we have seen in the last three to four hundred years. We are so busy. We are, we are busier than a wall, than a one-armed wallpaper hanger. We're just busy 
we are just as busy as we can be and we think because we're busy we're effective but I want you to challenge your schedule for a minute and ask yourself are you are you really being effective or is your life cluttered with all kinds of stuff that demands you and drains you and taxes you and stops you from being your highest and best self and are you substituting busyness and all the chaos that goes along with busyness from being effective. Let me tell you, a bunch of scientists got together and they began to do some research and they began to determine that 80% of the things we do are busy things that we do in an area that is not effective, that the average person only spends 20% of their time doing the thing that they are really gifted at, created at passionate about, excited to do, and the rest of it is all the dismal, dumb stuff that we all have to do in order to survive. Just crazy stuff that we're doing. Wonder what would happen if we would go from doing 80% of things that are busy but not effective and 20% of the things that are really effective if we would switch those numbers around and only give 20% of our time to the things that we have to do and 80% of our time to the thing that we were created to do. Wonder what would happen to your life. Now think about it a minute. I, there's a lot of things you could take from me and I could make it. You could take my suit. I got another one. You could take my car. I could get another one. You could take my house. I could get another house. Uh, but when you take my time, you have taken something from me that is totally irreplaceable. We take all kinds of classes for money management. We, we know how to manage our money. We know how to repair our houses. We're working on our hair and our bodies and all of this kind of stuff. We do everything except the most important thing is to value our time. It takes time to be creative. You were meant to be creative. You were created in the likeness and the image of a creator. And in that likeness and in that image, you have creativity. If you had time, you would be creative. But in the absence of time and with busyness and clutter and the phone, y'all got music playing on your phone, all kinds of stuff. And no matter what kind of song you put on it after a while, you hate to hear it because every time you hear that sound, you know it's somebody else wanting something else from you that's taking you away from what you are gifted and creative to do. This is a life class. That means that we have an opportunity to learn how to maximize our lives. Think of the things that you're doing that somebody else could be doing. And think of yourself as a precious commodity that you are going to reserve your energy for your highest and best use. The first thing we teach people that understand their significance, if you are doing anything that somebody else in your life could do, you are not reserving yourself for your highest and best use. We are not using our life, our time, our energy for our highest and best use. And something in the back of this brain back here is going ding, 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 ding. You're missing it. You're missing your life, your purpose, your passion, your excitement, your enthusiasm. And through these classes, what we want to do is shake you and rattle you and stir you up to understand that every moment is a gift. Every second is a gift. Every thought is a gift. Every idea is a gift. Every opportunity is a gift. Everybody you meet is a gift. You are gifted with opportunities. And I want to show you how to begin to maximize what you've got. People will define you by how they met you. Whether it may be girlfriend, mother, banker, whatever it is, they, if they define you right there. They put a period. But if you have the capacity to do more, turn that period into a comma. I, I tell people, don't let people put a period where God has put a comma. Explore all of your life, no matter how diverse it is. There are some people who have more capacity and they can handle more things. And there are other people who have to focus on one thing and do one thing well. You have to determine which one you are and be that. A lot of people don't know how to get a, get over the past. They don't know how to forgive. They confuse forgiving with forgetting. You don't have to forget it to forgive it. They need to also realize that forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. 
It does not exonerate the perpetrator. It doesn't mean that they weren't wrong. It just means that I'm not going to be 